recording. Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show, um, we're whatever. <laughs> um, we're here live every Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. However, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. We do record the show every week, as we are doing right now, and you can always watch our show at your convenience um, later. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can go to see all of those recordings. Um, we do a mixture of things on Encompass Live, uh, presentations, book reviews, uh, interviews, demos, uh, mini training sessions sometimes. Um, basically anything library related we um, are happy to have on the show. We do bring in guest speakers sometimes from the outside, but sometimes we have um, Nebraska Library Commission staff do sessions. And um, that's what we have today is mainly commission staff. I guess, Anika, you'd be considered outside of the commission, <laughs> officially. Um, sitting next to me this morning, and you can't see this morning, we don't have our camera going today because um, we're yeah, getting things going quickly. Um, Joanne McManus, who is here at the Library Commission, our intern grant, internship grant person. Actually, you do a lot of different grants here. I do. This is the one we happen to be working on at the moment. That's <laughs> right. Um, and then on the line with us is Mary Jo Ryan. Hello, Mary Jo. Hi, everyone. Um, she's our communications coordinator here at the commission. She's not in the office at, at the moment, so she's here remotely. Um, and then also um, Anika Ramirez, who is the director of our Three Rivers Library System up in northeast um, northeast section of Nebraska, is on the line as well. Hello, Anika. Hello, everyone. Hello. And um, they're going to tell us about the um, internships that program, the internship internship grants that we have going right now. So I'll just hand it over to you, Joanne, since you're here in charge of the presentation. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Krista. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in today and those that will be tuning in later on the recorded version because I think we have a lot of good information today. Um, Mary Jo and I will primarily be doing the presentation, but we invited Anika Ramirez to uh, join us today from Three Rivers Library System because uh, prior to her being the director of the library system there, she was the director of the Scribner Library and actually had an intern through this program. And so if we get any tough questions from the audience about actual interns in the library, she has firsthand experience. I've had interns before, but not in a library situation. But um, anyhow, we're happy to have Anika join us and to join in uh, anytime she feels uh, uh, like doing so. I do want to mention before we click off of this first slide that uh, the Nebraska Library Internship Grant Program for 2016 is supported in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library uh, Services and Technology Act and of course that's administered through the Nebraska Library Commission and that grant program uh, we are doing in partnership with the Nebraska Regional Library System so we appreciate their help and so thank you Anika for that. Okay. Uh, and, okay. Try again. There we oh go. there we go. So we primarily have two audiences today. Most of you that are tuning in live are actually from the libraries funded in this round of 2016 Nebraska Library Internship Grant Program. But we have others on the line as well. And obviously you're here to hear uh, successful tips for to having successful internships in your library. And so uh, we are going to really be concentrating on things that would be helpful to anybody who is having interns. But every once in a while, you'll hear me say, and in our grant program, this. And so obviously, um, those that are uh, having a grant should uh, perk their ears up for that. But we will cover the actual agreements and that sort of things toward the end of the session. OK, so what is the secret to successful internships? Well, I think it's planning. <laughs> and as you can see from a quote that we got from our last time we did internships, one of our intern supervisors commented that planning makes all the difference. And she had a detailed calendar 
of what they wanted to do over the internship, and she found that extremely useful. So I think mm -hmm. planning is um, a good thing, and we're going to go over all the kinds of things you need to think about before your intern is uh, uh, on staff and then even afterwards as well. And Mary Jo, <clears throat> always feel free to jump in whenever. So, and as far as planning, uh, I just wanted to kind of bring your attention to uh, thinking back on things that weren't planned so well. So, did you ever have a job that when you are, you know, you went to talk to somebody about the job opening and they really had trouble describing the duties? Or did you start a new job and you got to work and the supervisor really wasn't prepared to start your training, tell you about an orientation, even provide you with what their expectations were for the job? And on that first day, did you ever find, feel that you really weren't productive because you were probably sitting over on this, in this office waiting for somebody to tell you something or show you something or just get you started? Well, in these insurance in these short-term internships, we really don't have luxury to waste uh, the intern's time by not being prepared. And of course, if uh, because that internship period is really um, not a very lengthy one. Uh, and of course, if you waste the intern's time, you're really ultimately wasting your time because you're not going to get as much out of that internship. So invest some time before the internship starts, and that way you can get it off on the right foot and you can use that same template, te same template the next time you do an internship. So planning now is important, and I think it'll pay off in the future. So preparing for that intern. First of all, you do need to think of how you're going to be planning to pay that intern. Obviously, if you received an internship grant, you probably have $1,000 that's available to you, so you're good to go. But for other libraries, uh, there can be some creative ways to find funding to support an intern. Uh, sometimes your friends group might be interested in helping. You could have a fundraiser, and I think that's a good fundraiser. A lot of even the um, students at the high school might be able to get involved because they're interested in getting that internship if uh, you have one. And of course, local businesses in your community might be willing to partner on an internship. And I think, you know, when you look at, um, you know, a thousand dollars will get you more than a hundred hours of an intern. Mm -hmm. um, you really can get a lot out of that. So there's uh, two ways basically to provide payment to your interns. You can hire an intern as a part-time temporary employee and pay them an hourly wage. Or the other option is to use a stipend-based internship and provide the intern with one or more stipend payments to equal what you plan on paying. And we do recommend actually uh, more than a single stipend uh, because you don't want them to work. Let's say, for instance, if you were um, if you figured this intern is going to be working about 110 hours for you. You don't want to wait to the end to, for them to get their reward. Mm -hmm. And you certainly don't want to pay it on the first day no. uh, because they might not come back. So I think you'd want to split that uh, stipend up into um, two to four payments and then, you know, pay them kind of on a regular basis. Uh, you, one way that I don't have up here, but it's because we, uh, it's really not a good way to go, and that's, uh, some people in the past have talked about paying their intern on a contract basis, and really, they are not. They don't have a business, so they really can't. Uh, you can't do them on a contract basis. That's what you do when you want to hire somebody who's a business person, and they're going to come in and do something on a contract basis. So, how much do you pay? Well, if it's stipend based, and I talked to the Nebraska Department of Labor on this. If, even though it's stipend based, you still need to pay at a minimum, uh, at least minimum wage. In Nebraska, that's $9 an hour right now. If it's an employee, again, you have that, you have that hourly wage, and of course, the minimum, uh, minimum wage is $9 an hour. 
However, there is an exception if it is a empl new employee under the age of 20 and it's during that first 90 days of employment. You can choose to pay a training wage and that has to be at least 75% of the federal minimum wage. And so that calculates out to a minimum of $5.44. So uh, if you're really in those first 90 days and that person is under 20, you could pay uh, as little as $5.44 an hour for the first 90 days. Uh, remember, for those of you who are linked to your city government or county government, you're going to want to visit with them because they might have guidelines uh, to hiring or paying stipends that they might want you to follow. So definitely check with them. Okay, so before you de determine your work plan and intern duties, you're going to want to come up with some goals and outcomes for your internship. Um, I think it's good, to, especially since most of you are getting grants through our Nebraska Internship Grant, to first start with our goals. And of course, I think these are good goals, even if you're doing an internship outside of our grant program. You're going to want to involve uh, the student in real library work. Uh, you want to provide a view of the role of libraries, library operations, and the role of technology. And you want to ensure that the internship serves as a recruitment tool to help the student view the library as a viable career path. And obviously, if it's going to be a recruitment tool, you're going to make sure you want to give them a good experience. Otherwise, they're not going to want to work in libraries again. So, mm -hmm. you know, give that some thought as well. Uh, okay. And then um, after you start with those core goals that our internship program had, then you're going to want to add some of your old, own goals related to specific needs in your library. What do you need in your library? You might want to expand a program that you have. You might think that you haven't done a lot in social media, so you might want to start that or expand that. Uh, you might be looking at an older website and you think it needs to be updated and jazzed up and maybe you can find somebody that has that expertise. Uh, maybe a section in your library needs to be reorganized. Um, you know, there's just so many things that as you look around your library, you might say, yes, that is what we need to work on. So add those to your goals uh, if um, <clears throat> that's important to you. So, now that you have your goals, you need to actually put together the work plan. What is the duties going to be of the intern? Um, now, those of you who have already submitted a grant application, you have described the duties uh, that that intern will be working at. So, you've told us that they're going to be uh, working on uh, the website or they're going to be working on um, adding to the, the some of summer programs that you have. So do you need to stick to that described list of activities or can you update that um, and take it a whole different direction after you've been funded? Well, we're going to talk about that. Uh, well, it's possible that your grant application was successfully partially because of the list of activities that you described. So we've got to think about that, but on the other hand, we do want you to be provide a great experience for that student. Uh, we want to make sure that you use your students' talents and skills. So it's possible that you said, let's work on the summer reading program. But now that you're interviewing interns, you find out that you found an intern that has a skill that you could really use in your library. She knows a lot about websites. And you go, hmm, maybe that's what I want to use that intern for. And of course, we want you to end up with work product that really helps your library. So if as you are um, rethinking everything, interviewing interns, if you look at what you had put in your grant application and say, we really want to tweak it a little uh, because we think we can uh, do even better. Um, 
you know, we certainly are going to try to be flexible to let you do that. So if you wish to make adjustments, um, our request is that uh, you just go ahead and email me, tell me what's new about your work plan, maybe what you've eliminated, and then that would give us the opportunity to address any issues that we see. But hopefully, you're going to make improvements and not just say, okay, no, we decided not to do anything fancy. All she'll be doing is checking in books. <laughs> <laughs> that we probably won't be yeah. too excited about. Joanne, I would uh, wonder if you could ask, and, and or if we could ask Anika, if that happened when she had an intern, and whether or not they changed in midstream or began to change what that intern was doing based on the intern's uh, skills. Anika? Um, Thank you. I'm actually really glad you asked. I was just thinking of chiming in because what I did for in our timeline, I built in just special project and had a list of things that we would like the intern to be able to do, but she got to decide once we um, hired our intern, she got to help us decide what that special project was. So there's already time built in and we didn't actually say this is what we really want the person to do, we just allowed that to be really flexible as it already was. So there was um, all of the duties that helped kind of orient the uh, intern with library work with, you know, your kind of basic day-to-day -day stuff and then allowed our intern to work with us to develop a special project that she wanted to work on that also fit within our goal. So we kind of just left it to be determined until our intern was hired and we knew that it was someone that could work with us like that. Right. Yeah, and you, you just never know uh, what kind of an intern you're going to find that you're going to really want to capitalize on their particular talents and interests. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're going to have a better experience. If they're doing something they want to do uh, that's helpful to you, you're going to get a better work product as well. We also had a library a couple years ago that had a grant that uh, soon after the intern started, um, one of the full-time staff uh, decided to retire uh, before they were expecting her to retire. Mm -hmm. And so they really started to train that intern on how to do day-to-day -day activities. Oh, wow. And that act mm -hmm. intern actually then started uh, right after the internship as a part-time employee and was there for oh, about a year and a half before nice. they started the college. So, um, you know, sometimes an opportunity presents itself and you do need to think about a plan B. And we're good with that. We just kind of want a heads up on when mm -hmm. that happens and so we can see if there's any issues. <clears throat> All right, we do have a question that came in um, came in a little after about the salary and paying uh -huh. them. Um, this person says, for our city, we would have to pay them out of salary, which is perfectly fine. Um, since they would technically be employees, we would pay Social Security at 6.2% and Medicare at 1.45%. Is, is it okay that money from the grant goes to that as well? Right, and we will be uh, going over that um, later on, but yes, they can spend it on stipends, they can spend it on salary, and they can spend it on any sort of taxes, FICA, that's associated with that salary. Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, many of you had gotten a copy of the press release that went out, and um, so you saw a lot of the projects that our 26 libraries who's been fun funded uh, plan on doing, but I kind of just wanted to go over some of these and I kind of categorized them in different areas. Um, but this will start you thinking too about, hmm, maybe this project or that project that some other library talked about um, might be of more interest than what I put on our particular grant application. So this is just to give you some uh, thought process. So of those duties that the 26 funded libraries put on there, we do have some program related and we have everything from uh, assisting to planning to implementing to expanding to actually 
um, leading discussion groups. So those interns are doing everything from, you know, a little bit less hands-on to very hands-on. But uh, obviously there was quite a few that mentioned summer reading programs, uh, story time, we had some lap sits, uh, youth book clubs, teen programs, um, a lot of different event-related, um, one-time event-related things like the annual book si sale, art show, photography contest, 3D printing workshop, entrepreneurship club, camp, Lego club, um, all kinds of things you can see there. I think some of these are things that the libraries might do um, you know, on a yearly basis. I think others of these are just brand new because they're going to have an internship, an intern to help them do that. Um, we have people that said they're going to organize or reorganize things like at the adult, Young Adult Youth Center, a Do It Center, and they had gotten that idea uh, from the system directors at the, our last conference. Many of you saw that um, Do It Center that Anika and her uh, compatriots put together, and that was really fun. So one of the libraries is going to work on that. There's research projects that interns can do. One is going to be researching an alternative circulation system and actually going to another library to check out how that works at that library. Mm -hmm. uh, a feasibility of portable makerspace using equipment that the library actually owns and is just sitting in the back closet and how they could actually put it out there and get those items productive. Uh, there was a lot of technology-related stuff. A lot. Um, some one person, one library was going to have them help with the weekly maintenance on the computers, assist with creating the library's technology plan that they were going to be working on this year. And there was actually several that was going to have their interns teach technology classes. Uh, and one was actually going to actually do not only teach the classes, but to develop the curriculum. And in that particular library, they were looking at hiring a um, college age, actually a graduate student. And so obviously, you know, maybe if you're hi hiring, getting a high school student, um, teaching is certainly fine. I don't know if they'd be uh, developing curriculum for you. A lot of uh, social media and web type things, and obviously students are um, young folks that grew up with all of these aspects, so they're really very good at it. So updating the library's website, updating the Facebook page, doing things in Pinterest, sending out tweets. And then a lot of creativity outlets. A lot of them was going to be planning craft activities. We had some decorating bulletin boards, creating book displays. And I think, um, you know, young students are interested in kind of that hands-on stuff. So I think those are good things to get them involved in. And then, of course, public relations. And Mary Jo, do you want to talk about public relations? I'll keep going just in case she. <laughs> yes, I do. There you I go. couldn't get myself unmuted. I'm talking away and no one can hear me. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's really important that um, you think about the, the talents and skills that some of these young people might bring to your public relations and your communication materials. Um, some of them are, have got great ideas, I think, and um, also have some, have some skill. You know, you might ask them if what they've been doing in their art classes at school and just get a sense of that. The main thing is um, when you're working with anyone from outside the library on communication pieces, just be sure to kind of stay involved. Don't just uh, turn things over to really to anyone outside the library because you are the experts on how you want to present the library's message and the library's story. And even though someone might be very talented in terms of art um, or design or communication, they don't necessarily know what the message of the library should be. And a lot of times they come to um, helping you with the idea that books are, are really our only message. And as we all know, 
that's just one of our many messages. So, um, in, again, use the students, feel, feel uh, free to, to explore their talents and skills, but uh, keep, keep, that, keep control of the message, keep control of the story. And uh, I've got lots and lots of materials and tools that can help you um, communicate with the student before the student starts working on communicating with your customers. I'd be happy to share that. Is that helpful? Yep. Yep. And I think, too, when you have uh, a student working in your library, just taking them with you to the local newspaper or whatnot, um, that newspaper person is going to, you know, perk up a little bit. So even though you're helping spread, you know, share that message and making sure the message is correct, I think sometimes um, bringing somebody in, it just makes somebody else perk up a little bit because it's just not you again. So, okay. Well, and that's a good point, Joanne. The, the, the fact of the student working in the library, that is a story. You know, and so that's, again, something you, you want to make sure that story gets out, that we're, uh, that we're excited about the young people in our community and that they have so much to give to our community and, and they're giving it right there in the library. Right. And in some communities, especially the smaller ones, it's hard to find jobs for the youth in the community. And so this gives one more person a job. And if anybody that can get a job in their local community might be more likely to come back to that community and work. So, And that's important in rural Nebraska. So it's just one more thing that you can do for your community by having this in turn. Okay, and then there was a lot of things book related as well. Uh, restock shelves, um, unload and reshelf in the bookmobile, process books, both new and donated, repair books, read book selection. Um, you know, these are all normal things that you do on a daily basis anyhow. And of course, assist customers. It's really nice to have those students interacting with customers uh, at the circulation desk helping people use public computers, using devices, and researching question, answers that they have uh, to questions. And then there was some miscellaneous things that uh, didn't fall into any of those other categories that I have listed here. There's upload content to digital archives. Uh, one is going to assist in the creation of volunteer training process for digital repository project that they have. Um, in Skyler, they're going to be, they're hope, uh, assuming they can get a bilingual student, then that student will be helping with Spanish and English translations in both verbal and written. Um, some of, there was one intern that was actually going to be supervising some volunteers and activities, so that was cool. Um, update program materials, create tutorials, and creating lists of kid-friendly games and websites, and that was to put on their particular website. So there's all kinds of activities that you could do, and um, so kind of give your list a look of what you said you were going to do or what you're thinking about doing, and really kind of figure out if, if that's the right direction. And as you interview students, uh, kind of keep an open mind to what their um, talents are. So timing. Um, in our particular grant program, you could your intern could be on board as early as uh, mid-March. They could stay as late as the end of November. So you really do have quite a few months to work with. So when is the best time for your inter to, for you to have that intern at your library? Well, you're going to want to consider the student schedule. Um, but even though, even if you do it outside of the summer months, you know, that student does have some open time in the evenings, and so that certainly is possible to get started. Um, you also want to consider what the best time for the library is. And generally, even though a lot of libraries who applied say, you know, we want our student, our intern there at our busiest time because that's when we need the student. I don't think you want to start during your busiest time because I think you want to start that internship when it's not quite so crazy. 
So you are able to devote time to getting that intern started, um, especially if it's a special project. Now, if you're bringing in that intern to work on the summer reading program, then obviously that is your crazy time, but still consider bringing that intern in prior to that so they can help with the planning and the organizing and you know, kind of getting settled. You can have time to give them more an orientation. Anything else on that, Anika or Mary Jo? I think having that um, that period of orientation where you can kind of go over, you know, expectations. I think our first, especially our first week, was just sort of becoming familiar with the library from the other end. Um, you know, not as a patron, because um, there was definitely a little shift for us. Uh, because the intern we, we did end up having was a, a patron, and so kind of shifting that perspective um, took a little bit. Uh, and also just sort of talking about um, library principles and uh, getting a little bit more, kind of getting some of the philosophical things out of the way <laughs> um, so that we could uh, start off on the uh, same foundation of understanding um, for what what library work is and what our, our goals in the community are. Um, so I think definitely not during your busiest time. We only had two staff, you know, myself and one other person, so that was a little bit tricky. Um, but it was also a, a really good opportunity to um, help our, like, our intern got to shadow us a lot at, in that first week or two because we had to keep working, um, you know. Right. While she was starting too, so uh, shadowing was, a, I think, a really good way to kind of start off that orientation. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so recruitment. Um, I think you're going to want to think about the skills and attributes that an intern would need to be successful performing the task um, that you are intending to do. So if you're saying that your, some of your tasks are to teach some technology classes, obviously you're going to be wanting to look at those skills and making sure that you select an intern that has those skills. You're going to want to think about what the best age range uh, might be for a student for your particular situation. Do you want to recruit a college student or a high school student or do you want to be open to either and just uh, open it up to both and uh, see who applies, but um, I think it might depend on what your list of activities are going to be, um, depending on which one might be the better fit for you. Obviously, a college student is going to bring more maturity uh, to, the, to your library, but a high school student is going to also, you know, be in the community for sure, and um, you know, they bring a whole new perspective as well. So I think both can work for people, but, you know, just give some thought to that. And then if you're looking at high school students, is there any age that might be too young? We have had uh, some younger students, you know, some even uh, freshmen at one point. Um, it, the only thing to be, any high school student is fine, but do remember that if the student is under 16, you do, there are guidelines, you know, as far as how many hours they can work today, a day, and um, how late they can work during the school year. So keep that in mind. And if they're also under 16, then you also have to have, they have to have an employment certificate. And it, those issues are not big issues, but you just need to be aware of them if you do hire somebody under 16. So, Joanne, if they uh, are considering hiring somebody under 16, would you suggest they give you a call and you'll uh, turn them on to whoever in the community can help them with uh, getting an employment certificate and all that? Right. And Department of Labor has a good website. And um, so they there's some good information there. But, yes, they can contact me and I will... Uh, turn them on to the information that they do need to be careful, you know, so they know that if it's during a, a during the school year that they can't have a more than so many hours a day or so many hours a week and they can't be there after 
think it might be 8 o'clock. Uh, but yes, um, I can help them out with that. So now you know whether you're hiring a part-time employee or a stipend-based intern. You know what the job duties are. You know what skills or ideas. So it's ready. It's time to search for that intern. Some of you might already have an idea for that intern, um, and many of you do not. But so, how do you get that word out? And I know, um, you know, Mary Jo, do you want to just take this one, or do you want me to? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I think your best uh, avenue would be with your local newspaper. And I, we gave you a news release that you can use, and they may have already even run it because it was sent out yesterday to our complete list of newspaper outlets. But um, I definitely think uh, for those of you that have an, an internship that you're opening up in the near future, contact your newspaper right away. Um, ask them if there's anything they'd like to do uh, to amplify that article, if they'd like to come out and take a picture at the library of an activity at the library. Um, if they'd like you to uh, give them some additional quotes about what you specifically are looking for. I, I really think your newspaper is going to be your best bet. Another secondary uh, best bet is if you have a local radio station and they still do any kind of local programming. I know some of your radio stations don't. I know they're just, um, they're just running tapes basically from an, an, a uh, a standard station, but but if you do have a local radio station with any local that does any local programming, please do go ahead and and reach out to them as well. Even though they may not be playing um, music or news or anything that the students are interested in, an adult may hear it. And and your message is if you know a young person in our community that would fit, that likes people, that enjoys young people, that likes um, whatever it is your special programming is, for example, that knows a lot about the internet, whatever it is you'd like to have them working on, because you can, and get right out there and ask people to help you find your intern. So you're looking for, maybe you won't be able to reach directly to the student, but you might be able to reach the high school counselor, the school librarian, someone at the community college. Um, there's just a, a lot of different uh, people out there who would like to help you find your intern, so so ask them to. And you can see some of these other ideas. A sign up, a help wanted sign in the library. Um, there's a one stop for for paid internships. Uh, InternNebraska.com or InternNE.com. That's a really good place to to list your uh, opening. Um, did, Anika, how did you find your student? We advert, we made flyers that we put up in the high school, <clears throat> and then we also uh, put them up around town in some pretty common areas, as well as the library. Um, we were kind of open to high school or college student, um, you know, whatever it was, uh, you know, whoever would best fit. Um, so those were our main areas. Um, I would say if you're looking for one other idea is if you're looking for um, someone who can do technology specific uh, duties, um, maybe talking to your high school teachers who teach those specific subjects um, to see if there's any students that they have who might be qualified. And Facebook and you know your website are also probably some pretty good places to post information about the internship. Yeah, very good ideas. And, you know, I think that as far as, you know, when we want to use this as a recruitment tool to get uh, kids going to, you know, thinking about being working in a library someday, visiting with that school librarian to find out, you know, uh, their recommendation or to help spread the word. Because the students that are hanging out in the library at school, might really have an interest to work in the local public library. Okay, so when you're doing your selection and interviewing, do you really do you need to follow that same process you would when you're hiring a permanent employee? Um, 
first of all, I think if you're actually hiring an employee, even though it's a part-time temporary, you would, again, if you're linked to a city and county, uh, check with them to see if they have any interviewing guidelines that you need to follow because uh, they might be pretty set on how you do things. So check with them. If you're having a doing a stipend arrangement, you might, you know, you probably can be a little bit less structured on how you do that interviewing. But we actually suggest that you do take that process seriously. Um, ask every question, every candidate the same questions and consider having maybe a second person on that interview team, more than one. Um, this will just kind of help you um, look at different people in different ways because you have more than one person looking at uh, the candidates. Always put your best foot forward. A structured interview process, do let the students know that this is a real work relationship. They might be more likely if they went through a real interview process to treat the internship like a real job with real responsibilities and consequences. And hopefully that'll help lead to a more successful internship experience. But if you want to be a little bit less formal and your um, city officials or whoever you might be linked to is okay with that, um, you know, do what whatever feels right for you. But th this is our recommendation. We asked our um, applicants to also submit just a small, like a short paragraph about why they were interested. It helped to see, you know, one, their writing style and all that kind of stuff, but also just, you know, were they just looking for a job or did they have an interest in, in library world? So, right. Just a thought. Right, because certainly you might have a lot of people apply because, especially in smaller communities when they're aren't very many positions that are open. You know, anyone that wants to grab any job. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to figure out how to find the one that's really more serious about libraries um, would be a good thing. Okay, so as far as when you're coming up with your set of questions, you're gonna wanna determine some things. So kind of really think about what you're trying to get what kind of information that you're trying to get, and that'll help you come up with questions. So, you know, you're going to want to find out if they have the skill set that you're looking for. So, obviously, you're going to if you're going to develop some questions around that. Are they going to be dependable? What kind of question can you come up with that's going to tell you that? Maybe it's asking about uh, other um, things that they might have been in charge in at school or whatnot. Uh, are they open to learn new things? Uh, do they have the social skills needed? And I think you're going to kind of figure that out as you're doing that interview. Um, are they interested in the task areas that they're going to be working on? Ask them some questions about, um, you know, tell them about what you're going to be doing and try to get some feedback on those particular tasks. And do they have an interest or talent in un in other areas that might be a better direction for the internship? So, you know, you might be set on a particular project, but have some open-ended questions where you're finding out what other talents they might have. Um, and before you really even know who's going to be interviewing, kind of determine the criteria that you're going to be considering as, uh, in that interview process. So that way you can always refocus on what you thought was initially important. Now that doesn't mean things won't change when you find a good intern here, but it kind of refocuses you back on what you thought was important as far as a good candidate. And then, of course, after all the interviews, select your new intern, and hopefully it'll be a good one. Now, we've had experiences in the past where uh, a library has hired an intern, um, and they have not, you know, it was pretty clear early on that the intern was not excited about the job duties. And it is fine if we st if you have an intern and they're not and they find out they don't have that intern interest level, that we can switch gears and um, and rehire a second intern. So if you're having an issue with an intern, don't feel like just because you gave me their name and you hired them 
um, that it's too late to go to a new intern. And of course, they might get a different job or, you know, you just never know mm -hmm. why an intern might decide to leave. So you found your perfect intern, hopefully. You're going to want to agree on a start date. Uh, and before that first day, you have some more things to do. You're going to want to share your thoughts and plans with other staff in your library and other, and other volunteers in the library so uh, they know what's happening when they see this student in there for the first day. Uh, you're going to want to take another look at the work plan. And now that you know who your intern is, um, are you going to want to tweak that work plan to capitalize on that intern's talent? You're going to want to be organized, have a plan, write down what you're going to need to do for the internship and what you want the intern to do when they're in the library. And then try to put that plan in a timeline. And, you know, it can be a flexible timeline. Uh, but if you have a timeline, then you kind of know what's coming up next and you can get ready for it. And then the intern uh, also kind of knows what's up ahead. That you and you can share that with the intern when they get there. And uh, so on that timeline, um, you're going to want to make sure that you have in there uh, how you're going to uh, introduce the intern to the projects that they're going to be working on. Uh, you're also going to want to have in there how you're going to orient the intern to the work of the library. Even though that intern might be only working on, let's say, the website or, you know, a couple projects, you still want to orient the intern to the work of the library. You're going to want to show them how, you know, tell them about uh, how you market the library and that, you know, there's um, budgeting and there's city council and there's this and you know just everything so give them kind of a complete live picture of a library even if they're not working in many of those areas and then of course since we're using this as to recruit students hopefully to career paths in uh, with library careers share information about education and career paths in library careers and Mary Jo do you want to chime in on some of uh, the career paths available as far as education. And of course, we can help you get you this information to share it. You don't have to know, you know, know it. We we want to help you do that. So Mary Jo, do you have some thoughts on that? I do. And um and I, I apologize because I'm not sure how easy it's going to be for Krista to pull up this website. But um, we have a website on the Nebraska Library Commission uh, website, which is called Now Hiring at Your Library. And there's a segment of that website when you get to it. It's Now Hiring at Your Library. I'm sorry, Krista. I should have warned you about this. No, it's okay. We can get it. So oh, if you, um, if, if one easy way to get there is to go to our website first. Yeah. And... <laughs> so let's hope we're not having those internet problems again. <laughs> there we go. If I spell it right, it works better. <laughs> and then if you go down the flyouts on the left-hand side, there's something called Jobs and Careers and Now Hiring. And then up on that uh, second bullet at the top, it says Now Hiring at Your Library. And here we have a bunch of resources for mentoring and internships and scholarships. But if you look at the Learning tab... <laughs> where it says learning on the second. There we go. Then here you'll see a variety of different educational opportunities. And you can go through this with your student and explain to them that there's different ways to start in library education. And you, it, it's a ladder of learning. And you can start, for example, with Nebraska Community College classes. And those are transferable to other schools so you could get a certificate or you could get an associate of arts degree in library science and then that'll transfer um, if you I'm sorry if you go up to um, UNO because they have undergraduate programs that would transfer to some of the, their undergraduate programs as well as they have a graduate degree which is a partnership with the University of Missouri again there's other options uh, Kearney University of Nebraska at Kearney 
has a graduate program in library media. So there's a variety of different pro projects, or I mean, options listed here, ways for, for students to continue their education. And there's really two people that, that I would recommend that you make contact with, and we will send you their uh, contact information. They are, they are both just excellent in talking to, to students that, that uh, don't know exactly what they want to do and helping them figure out where they are in the learning process and what would be best for them next. And one of them is Dr. Becky Pasco at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, and the other is Dr. Cheryl Crow at the uh, University of Nebraska at Kearney. So both of them can help people find the, um, the path that's best for them. But we've got some other uh, contacts we can give, to give you, and we'll be sending those to you so that as you feel your student out and get a chance to see where they're at when they're thinking, and if they're thinking about the possibility of going on to college, that this might be an option for them. So we'll, we'll be sure and send you that information. But just to know, it's right here on our website as well. OK. OK, so the other thing we would like you to do is follow the intern's progress. And again, whether you have a grant or not, this is important to do. Um, in the grant, obviously, we'd like you to be prepared to report on the progress, and there is a final um, survey that the supervisor will be doing that will be answering some questions about the progress of the student. So if you kind of track it a little bit, then it'll help you fill out that, that last survey. And of course, important to you is to allow you to make adjustments and provide guidance. If you're always checking in on the intern's progress, then you're going to see that maybe they didn't understand that assignment, or maybe they're progressing faster than you expected, and you're either going to need to get them another assignment, or maybe they can go a little bit more in depth in that assignment that they're working on. It's going to allow you to make a timely feedback, so you can say, hey, wow, that's really great, or well, that's pretty good, but maybe you should uh, do it this way. It might be a little bit more streamlined or something. And uh, always checking in with the intern makes it easier for the intern to ask you questions, so it helps uh, open up those lines of communication. And I'm sure there's just so many other benefits to kind of keeping up with your intern's progress. And I don't know if, Anika, if you had any situations that might be able to talk to this. I don't know if I can think of any one specific situation. I just know that um, for us, you know, once a week we had time scheduled to check in, and it was really tempting to not do that because in our small library, you could easily see other, you know, how each person was working. I could easily see how our intern was working. Um, but taking the time to sit down and actually have a conversation about, you know, what you're doing and um, if they have any questions, as well as kind of that impromptu checking in, I think was a really good way to build a working relationship and make it more personable. So, right. right. And, you know, and sitting down and talking to them, maybe they might mention, hey, you know, I noticed that that over there needs to be done, and I kind of have an interest in doing that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just might find out things that is, is really be beneficial to your internship. So, obviously, we want to make this a good experience to both the intern and the library. So what leads to a good experience for the intern, other than that $1,000, and we know that <laughs> that's going to help. Um, but, you know, things that's going to help you get to a good experience for them is that they're gaining valuable experience. And so make sure that they're learning something. Uh, that's how you get to that valuable experience. They can use the internship on future job and co college applications. And of course, if they're going to do that, then they're going to want to be able to describe some meaty project that uh, they were able to do at the library. If all they're doing is sitting at the circulation desk checking in books, then yeah, they can say they had an internship at the library, 
but it doesn't give them much to describe. So make sure that, you know, they're really doing something um, that, that makes a difference to them. Um, what also makes good experience is that they feel like they made a difference in the lives of others. So make sure that they, even though they might be stuck on a project, uh, doing something in the back that, you know, puts them in the back room most of the time because they're working on something, um, you know, have them have some experience with the customers that are in the library so they can see that they're really uh, doing something that's beneficial. They might be making new friends, that's with uh, co-workers or even some of your customers. And so if you have, if you're, unless you're with a, at a small library where you only have a single employee, you know, allow them to work with other employees within uh, the library because they might have a real good rapport with one or two of those and if they never were able to work with them, um, you know, just, you know, connecting them with the right staff might help with that good experience. So what else might lead to good experiences? And of course, I, I should have said this earlier, anybody is always welcome to just type in the chat box what you're thinking and we can even unmute you and mm -hmm. get you in the conversation. <clears throat> Okay, so we will just move on to what leads to good experience for the library and library staff. Because obviously, this is a two-way street. We want this to be a good experience for the library as well. Um, one of the things, the intern may have skills that current staff do not possess. So even though it's kind of hard to um, hire somebody for a project that you personally don't have skills to do, not without any house, some extra research and, and reading, but, you know, it would be nice to be able to bring a skill into the library. So if you can do that, then that might be good for the library. Um, an intern can help make a stale project fresh because they have that new perspective. Maybe you've been doing the same program year after year. And really, if when somebody else looks at it, they could add some interesting things that you hadn't thought of because it's just so easy to do it the same way. You might notice that there's room for improvement because as you're showing your intern things, uh, they're asking questions of why do you do that or, you know, and so you go, well, well, maybe we shouldn't do it that way. Maybe there is a better way to do that. Um, you might be noticing that you're getting new customers because you have an intern in the office. I mean, in the library. Why is that? Is it because they're doing something that's making it a little bit more exciting, or is it just because they're seeing more people in their age range in the library? So kind of take advantage of that and um, figure out, well, if that is getting new customers, what else can I do to get some new customers? And um, you might find that your intern would make a great part-time employee or even a volunteer. So if that's the case, try to figure out how you can explore some new funding sources to keep that intern coming back as a part-time employee. So, you know, t take advantage of, if you find a real good intern that is really valuable to you, uh, figure out what you might be able to do to get get that person back into your library. And of course, they're, they've been working on a project. They've been uh, doing something for your website or they helped you expand a program or they did something similar. So, um, you know, that's great to have in your library and, and that's also a great opportunity to market that new thing that you have. So I think there's a lot of things that can be beneficial for the library. Are there anything else that you can think of or that you're hoping uh, to do in your library? You can just use your questions section if you go to webinar interface, type in any thoughts you have. <clears throat> or if you do have a microphone, you can just um, type in, I have a mic, please unmute me and I can, you Ooh, can I guess we're on, getting just like Anika and Mary Jo. 
it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> yep, that's okay. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll yeah. move kind of fast. Yeah. And I'll just, you know, yeah, if anyone does, we, as, as Joanne just realized, it is 11 o'clock, which is officially our, our, um, our show is officially 11, 10 to 11 a.m., but um, we're gonna we will keep going until we're through all the slides and gotten everything taken care of. And any questions you all have, um, if you do have to leave because um, you only had this amount of time scheduled for this, that's fine. Um, we're recording the show. You can always watch the rest of it later. Very good. Um, I did want to mention some resources available to you. Um, we do have on our website at nowhiringatyourlibrary.nebraska.gov/internships. Um, we have that proposed timeline and schedule of intern activity. So that's a great example for you to pull up and do your timeline and schedule. There's a sample public library orientation plan for you to use if you need one. Uh, also on the Nebraska Department of Economic Development's website, they have a great employer guidebook to developing a successful internship program. And that's also linked from our site. And then internne.com also has uh, good information from you. So take a look at that sometime. Now I'm just going to not stop for questions and we're going to mm -hmm. just go on to things that are def definitely more important to those that received a grant. You all have received uh, two copies of the agreement, sign both and return one to us. Uh, you received a request for payment form, sign and return that. That will trigger a, that check to your library. So then within a month, you'll be getting uh, that $1,000 or whatever grant um, you received. Uh, again, we talked about that internship window. You, that intern can be on board as early as March 15th, and, but they do need to be wrapped up by the end of November. But you can start to advertise and interview prior to March 15th. Those of you who are going to be fast tracking this and starting soon, uh, if you need something from me, definitely get in touch since I haven't sent everything out to everybody. Um, the, these are requirements. The intern must be a high school student or college student. A homeschooled high school student is also permissible. The student must not have been employed by a library in the past or currently, and they never, and you can't get a student that has interned at a library in the past or currently if it's in this grant program. However, there's no restrictions on past or current volunteers. So if you have a student volunteer that you want to turn into an intern with our grant funds, that is perfectly fine. Um, like we said earlier, you can only use the grant dollars for the stipends that go directly to the intern, intern wages, and for with the holdings associated with wages, such as FICA and other taxes. And at the end of the grant program, the, the library director will be asked to sign a form attesting to how those grant funds were expended. So keep in mind, Spend them on those things and we'll be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we do have uh, responsibilities for the supervisor of the intern. In most cases, the supervisor is the library director. But in some cases, uh, other libraries do have other named supervisors. They are to orient the student on the overview of library work, track the intern's hours and activities, uh, make that as we said before, make the intern aware of the library career path educational opportunities. Uh, complete the supervisor assessments and report in a timely manner. And then we also have um, a baseline survey that the intern does on their first day of work and a post-internship assessment that they do on their last day of work. And so that supervisor will make sure that the intern is instructed to complete those. They do have a right to uh, not complete those, but you do have to visit with them about uh, completing them. And of course, you need to respond to the Nebraska Library Commission when we have requests. And most of those requests will come from me, Joanne McManus. Um, and then I think this is our last slide. So we, 
actually made really good time here at the end. <laughs> but I do want, I, we are going to be open for questions too. Um, all the libraries who received a grant received a copy of the press release. I sent that to you last week. The media received their press release on February 16th. Um, but in all publicity, whether it's through this press release or if you want to have publicity throughout the year, make sure to credit the Nebraska Library Commission on all that publicity. And we actually have um, the sentence that uh, we prefer that you use on that publicity. Now, even though you might put out a press release, you can't always guarantee that the press is going to print it as you submit it. But uh, <laughs> You can try. <laughs> you can, we can try. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so May, you have your agreements. We sent those to you. You probably have questions, and hopefully we have answers. Mm -hmm. Yep, so if you have any questions, please type them into the questions section of your interface. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. Comments are any, fine as well. Oh, sure. Yes. Any ideas that you've, you're having for your interns? Any Can I just add a little something? Yeah, yes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it, even though there was, you know, definitely some work involved, I think it was a really rewarding experience for our library and for our intern. Um, you know, we worked hard to make her feel a part of the library rather than just, you know, a temporary uh, <laughs> employee or something. And um, uh, we were able to see what it would be like to have three people working in the library and could work towards securing funding for um, another part-time position. And so we were successful in that, but it took a little while, you know, after. Um, and she's actually employed at the library still now. So um, I think it really opened up some opportunities for our intern and for the library. So it was definitely a really good experience and worth worth the work. Mm -hmm. That's a very good comment, Anika. Yeah, I think a lot of it is something to think about is that it is, I think you said a two-way street, it's got it's beneficial to both you at the library getting someone to come in and do some work you need done, get some new projects done, but it it's good for them as well um, and whatever they want to do in their future, whether it is work for the library or go somewhere else, it, it'll be, it benefits them as well, the intern. Mm -hmm. And um, I might want to mention for those that are getting the internship grant, um, the one thing we don't want to see is now that, now that you have an intern and they're going to be working for you for 110, 120 hours, we don't want, even though it's really nice to have that extra help in the library, please don't have the intern, because the intern is coming in on Thursday, we can cut that part-time employee's hours and not be there on Thursday. Uh, it's not to replace um, hours that your current staff, whether they're full-time or part-time, is working. It might be that you can do without a, a volunteer that day, or maybe an employee called in sick, and so maybe that's a good opportunity to have that intern um, you know, work some extra hours. But it's really not because we have that intern there on Thursday night, we don't need that part-time person to come in and work her regular schedule. This is in addition to who you already have right. on staff. Yep. Well, it doesn't look like any questions came in. Anybody having or, or things they can think of to ask right now? Very good. Well, anytime you can give me a call or send me an email. And uh, whether you received an internship grant or not, we'd be happy to help. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Joanne and Mary Jo and Anika for um joining us this morning um, and thank you everyone for attending I hope you'll uh, check out the website check out more information about do, doing internships because we um, what's going on now with them and getting help with your current one and any future ones you might have um, that will wrap us up for today's show it has been and is still being been recorded um, and will be available potentially later today depending on how long it takes to process and as long as our internet stays connection stays stable um, uh, 
that it'll be available here on our Encompass Live website. Um, this is where we post all of our upcoming shows, and right underneath all of our upcoming ones is our archived Encompass Live sessions. And this is where this week's show will be listed as well. Um, both the show and the PowerPoint and any of the websites that were mentioned will be included as well. Um, I hope you'll join us next week, then, when our topic is linked data and libraries and overview. Um, linked data, this is a topic we've had on the show before, but it's actually been a few years, it turns out. Um, and so we decided to um, do that again. Uh, Robin Hastings, who's from north, just south of us, the Northeast Kansas Library System, um, she's going to talk to us about linked data, what it is and how it affects you and your library and how you can use it. So definitely sign up with um, for that show and any of our future shows. Uh, we'll have more added as we get them um, uh, confirmed, so there'll always be new topics on our list. Also, do um, if you are a big Facebook user, you can go over on Facebook and like us, like our page over there. Um, I post uh, reminders of when new shows are coming up. Um, when the recordings are available, I put on here, so you'll keep up to date on what we're doing over here on our Encompass Live page. So if you are big on Facebook, do go ahead and like us over there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Krista. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being on with us. Let us know if you have questions. <laughs>